Hi, good day everyone. This is Master Manuel. Okay, so today I will introduce to you the EV3 robot. Topics are, what is a robot? Two main parts of the robot. Electronic parts of the robot. Structural parts of the robot. Gears, specialty parts, the brick controller, and the sensors. First, what is a robot? As you can see here, we have a lot of different kinds of robot that we can create. But what is a robot? A robot is a machine, always remember that. It can perform certain actions like human, it can move like human, it can uh, imitate the movement of a human. Uh, some robots can walk, can speak, run, jump, etc. It is an artificial intelligence. When we say artificial intelligence, it means to say it is made up by human. Okay, the brain or the intelligence of the robot is not natural, it's artificial. It is programmable by a computer, okay, you can program a robot using a computer. It can perceive things, maybe it can hear, it can see, using some sensors. It can think and make decisions, okay, creating some conditional programming. We can decide how a robot act or perform depending on our program. Yes, that's right. So you can decide what you want a robot to do. You can program a robot to run. You can program a robot to listen. You can program a robot to just hear. Or you can even program a robot to move like human. Every robot has its two main parts. We have the hardware and we have the software. First, let's talk about the hardware. Hardware is the physical parts that you can see and touch. This includes the brick controller, the motors, sensors, battery, and the pieces or parts for assembling the robot. Next, we have the software. This is the program that we use to control and communicate with the robot. We use a program to put commands to instruct the robot to make an activity. Okay, we use the software to communicate with the robot, okay, because we cannot talk directly using our language. So we use a program so that the robot can understand us. We use codes, we use a programming language to create or instruct the robot. All right, so we have hardware and software. Okay, so these are all the hardware that we will see in the uh, in the box. Okay, as you can see, there's a lot of parts we have here. Okay, we have the motors, we have the sensors, we have all the parts here. And we have some uh, specialty parts here. And this is the software. This is the software that we will use in our computer. And in the brick controller, there's also a software installed in it, so it can communicate with our computer. These two. Okay, after we program in the computer, we will have to upload it in the brick controller or the brain of the robot. Okay, so these are the physical parts of the robot. First, we have the electronics, as you can see, all the parts that use electricity. We have the structural parts, okay, to build the body of the robot. We have the connectors, connectors to connect the pieces together. We have the gears, okay, spur gears, bevel gears, warm gears, okay, to create a movement. We have a specialty part to create special robots, okay, complex robots. We have wheels, if you are trying to create a car, we have ball bearing to let the robot turn. We have pulley rubber and bushings. First, let's talk about the electronics. These are the parts that requires electricity to work and function well. This includes the brake controller, sensors, battery, motors, and wires. Okay, so these are all the parts that requires electricity. Without electricity or without battery, these parts will not work. As you can see, we have the motors over here and we have the sensors over here. Okay, for the motors, we have two large motors and we have one medium motor. Motors will give movement to your robot. They can move legs, arms, wheels, and more. Next, we have the sensors. We have four different sensors over here. We have the ultrasonic, we have the color, we have the gyro, and we have the touch. Okay, sensors will allow the robot to see, touch, and recognize colors and light. Just like as humans, we have different kinds of senses, right? Next, we have the brick controller. It's like the brain of the robot. This will allow us to control the robot. It sends commands and instructions to different electronic pieces. It will need a battery to power it. That's what I told you a while ago. It needs a battery to power and all the electronic, okay? Just like the motors and the sensors. Okay, next we have this uh, flat black wires, okay? This is used to connect all the electronic pieces together. For example, the motors connect to the brick control. We will have to use these wires. Next, we have 
the structural parts. We have the beams. Okay, we, we call these beams. These are the parts that we use to build the base or the chassis of the robot. This is likely compared to the skeletal system of the human body. Okay, for us humans, we have bones, right? Of course, the robots do. They have what we call the chassis. Even cars, even trucks, okay, they have their own chassis. Okay, so these are what we call the beams to create the body of the robot. Next, we have the connectors. We have pegs, axles, and connector blocks. These are used to connect the pieces together or make the pieces stick together. Next, we have the gears. Okay, we have spur gears, bevel gears, and worm gears. These are what we connect to the motor and help the robot move. Usually, the gear is connected to the wheel. And next, we have the specialty parts. Okay, we have the wheels, we have the ball bearing, we have the pulley rubber, we have the bushings. These are more miscellaneous items included in the EV3 robot box. All right, so if we are trying to create a, a car, we will have to use a wheel. We will have to use some ball bearing to make the robot turn. If you're using another motor, we will have to use a pulley or rubber. And we have the bushings, okay, to lock the pieces together. Okay, EV3 brick overview. Okay, so these are the parts of the brick controller. Okay, first I will explain about the screen. Okay, on the top left part, you will see the wireless connection. All right, so these are the different kinds of wireless connections. Okay, you can see it all over here. In the middle, we have the brick name. By default, this is always EV3, but you can always change it. You can change it to your name or any name that you want. Next, we have here, okay, USB. This one is the connection established to another computer. Like, for example, your brick controller is connected to the computer. You will see USB over here. Next, we have here the battery indication, okay, the battery level. All right. Next, let's move on to the buttons. First, we have number one over here. This is what we call the back button. This one is uh, used to reverse actions, okay? Aborting or running a program or even shut down the brick controller. This is the center button or the OK button, all right? This one is used to select desired settings or to select blocks in the brick program. Next, we have number three over here. These are the, uh, these are the uh, navigation buttons, okay? If you want to press up or go up, you have to press here, left, right and down to use to navigate through the contents of the ev3 brick controller okay ev3 brick indicator light okay so we have a lot of indicators here we have red starting up or updating or shutting down red pulsing it means to say it's busy it's doing something we have orange alert or ready we have orange pulsing alert or running we have green ready we have green pulsing running the program Okay, so these are the sensors, motors, battery, and brick. Okay, so these are the electronic parts of the robot. Okay, so we have two large motors over here. Okay, let's you program precise and powerful ro robotic actions. This one is used to move the robot. We also have the medium motor over here. Next, we have the brick controller. This one serves as the control center or the brain of the robot. All right, this one is using reflected sound waves to measure distance. Next, we have the color sensor. It, ca it can recognize colors, different colors. Next, we have the gyro sensor. It can measure how fast your robot go or how fast your robot run. Next is the touch sensor. Okay, it can feel when it's touched, bumped, or released. And lastly, we have the battery, the rechargeable battery, of course. This is very important. Okay, without this battery, all of this will not work. Okay, we already know the use of a battery. Okay, everyone, open your books and we have an exercise to do. Okay, thank you. See you in our next lesson.